Hello, welcome to this special request video. It's on Excel keyboard shortcuts. It's one of the requests one of you placed, and uh, in this video, I'll be showing you popular Excel keyboard shortcuts the ones I use a lot, and the ones I'm sure that will turn you into an instant sensation among your colleagues or whoever is standing behind you while you work. So let's start. Here I have two tables. One is a monthly revenue from clients by month from January till June and the account manager of each client. The next table is a table of pizza sold definitely by a pizza restaurant and there are 5000 entries in these. So I'll be showing you how keyboard shortcuts can help you do a lot and faster. So let's start with the very simple keyboard shortcuts. The same keyboard shortcuts that work in Microsoft Word, the ones most of you are used to, they also work in Excel. For example, to make an entry bold, all you need to do is Control B, it becomes bold. If you want to make another entry underlined, all you need to do is Control U for underline. And if you want to italicize another entry, all you need to do is Control high So those regular keyboard shortcuts, they work in Excel too. So let's say I've done something. I've, I'm typing an entry here. Just gibberish. And I'll type something else. Then I realize, oh, what I've typed is wrong. I don't need it. Rather than deleting, I can undo. So to undo, it's Control Z, and I do it again, Control Z. So it goes back two steps. And in Excel, you can undo by default about 50 or 25 times. So what if I realize one of the things I have done? I want to bring them back. I want to, I want to redo. You do control Y. So it brings back one of the steps you've taken and you've used undo to remove. So let's go to the navigation keyboard shortcuts. You can use the arrow keys to move in an Excel file. You can move with the down arrow key, you go down, down once again, and with the right arrow key, I can go right, 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 and with the hop arrow key, I can go hop. I can go up once again and with the left arrow key I can go left I can go left I can go left so the arrow key is the walk and it's also a keyboard shortcut rather than you having to click where you want to go to you can with the arrow keys you can move there in Excel if you want to move very fast you want to move from where you are to the last data maybe down across a row or across a column to the last entry in the table where you are in, the keyboard shortcut to use is Control and then the keyboard arrow equivalent to the direction you are going to. If I want to move down, I want to go to the last entry down in this particular table, I will do Control plus down arrow key. To see the effect of that, I will come to this second table where I have 5000 entries. To get to the last entry, I'll have to keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and I still won't get there in the next two minutes. So the easiest option for me is to use the keyboard shortcuts to move across the entries in this table. So if I want to go to the last entry in this table, the last pizza sold, control and down arrow. If I want to go to the furthest entry on the right, control and right arrow. If I want to go up once and if I want to go up once again to the first entry on this same column, I will do control and hop arrow. So these are the these are the navigation keyboard shortcuts that you will find very useful. So what if I want to select this old table? So let me go to the back to the first cell in this table, which I will do control and the left arrow. So if I want to select this old table, I have several options. To select cells in Excel using the keyboard, 
you hold on to the shift key and you move across the cells you want to select so using the arrow keys you can see as i keep pressing on the right arrow key my selection keeps expanding and then i can keep moving down but i have 5000 entries here so it won't be easy scrolling to the 5000th entry so to jump straight to the last entry all i need to do is also control shift and then i do the down arrow the shift ensures that every cell i pass over is selected while the control with the down arrow goes to the last entry downwards so that's how you use the control and the shift key keyboard shortcut to select multiple cells so i'm going to do that again using this table i want to select the client column so i'll do control shift and down arrow if i want to expand this selection i want to expand it to the month of february i'm not planning to expand it to the last entry here it's easy all i need to do is shift key and the right arrow twice right arrow once right arrow twice so it keeps expanding stepwise column wise to the right but if i need to do for everything straight to the last last column which is account manager i will have to hold on to the control key so it control shift right arrow so this is how you select multiple cells using keyboard shortcuts before I move to the more programmatic keyboard shortcuts, let's do some other simple but a little tougher than these keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts that let you handle text across different sheets. So let's start with copying. I want to copy this particular table, in fact this particular entries, from this Excel sheet to another Excel sheet. So here I'm going to do two steps. I'm going to have to create a new sheet. In fact, I'm going to have to create a new Excel file that will have a new sheet and then I'll copy what is here and paste there. So to copy in Excel is Control C. It works the same copy control you use in other, in other programs. Control C, it works in Excel. So first of all, let's do the the creation of new Excel file. To create a new Excel file is Control N. Then to go back to where I was, there's a keyboard shortcut which is particular to Windows. This is not particular to Excel. It helps you move from one one program to another among the programs you've opened. So I'll do Alt Tab to go to where I was. Okay. So we are back to the Excel file that has the data I want to copy. So I'll do Ctrl C to copy, then Alt Tab to move to the sheets where I want to paste. And to paste, all I need to do is Ctrl V. So this is how you paste in Excel, Ctrl C and Ctrl V. To make these entries show, all I need to do is just increase the column width of the cells. I can do it from here. And I can double click on the border between this is the column and the next column, which is here. If I double click, it will do. Or I can select the entire cells and double click between the border of any two columns. It will do for everything. So we've done copy and paste. What if I want to cut? I want to move what is here, that is, cut it and paste it. Let's say I paste it here. So to cut in Excel, there's a keyboard shortcut, the regular keyboard shortcut, Control hex And then you go to where you want to move it to, where you want to paste what you've cut to. This time around, I want to paste it here. I do Control v and it is done. To make all the entries show once again, I'll click here. I'll double click between any two column borders. So this is how you copy and paste in Excel. So let's move back to the original file.
So what if I want to open an Excel file? An Excel file I have already. I want to open it. And I want to use a keyboard shortcut. So how do you open an Excel file using a keyboard shortcut? It's very easy. You do Control Ho, and it will bring out the file navigation dialog box. If you call this the file browser. Then you go to whichever of the file you want to open, and once you've seen the file, you can click Open. This is how you open an Excel file using the keyboard shortcut. And let's say I I no longer need this file. I I want to close the file. I've done I've done what I need to do with the file. I want to close it. There's a keyboard shortcut to close an Excel file, and it is Control W. It's going to ask me if I want to save any changes I've made to the file. I can use Tab to select my option. I don't want to save, so I use Tab to move to I don't want to save, and I click on Enter. That's the keyboard shortcut, close an Excel file. So let's move on to the more complex keyboard shortcuts. But before we do that, there's also for printing, if I want to print from OK with what I have here, I want to print it out. It's Ctrl P. Ctrl P to print. And then escape to go back. So let's move on to some more complex keyboard shortcuts. I would like you to notice that I have the clients here arranged alphabetical order. So let's say I need to add another client. I need to add, say, Diamond Bank. I don't want to put it after Radisson Blue. I want it to also come in the alphabetical position it should be in if it were to be in this sheet, in this table. That means it's going to come before Etisalat, after Dangote. So how do I create a new row above Etisalat using keyboard shortcuts? To do this, I'll go through two steps. First, I'll need to select the entire row. I want to create another row on top of, which is selecting the Etisalat row. To select a row, it's the keyboard shortcut is Shift Space. Then to insert a row above the row you've selected, it's Control Shift Plus. And that's how to insert a row. So let's enter the Diamond Bank details. So I've entered the Diamond Bank details. But what if I decided uh, this is wrong? I don't want to include Diamond Bank here anymore. So how do I delete? the entire row where I have put this diamond bank. To do that again, it's two steps. I'll select the entire row and then I'll delete the row. To select a row, it's, remember it's space shift. And then to delete that row is control minus. That's how you delete a row. So what if I want to create the month of July and enter the details for July. To do that, I'll also need to go through two steps. I will have to select the column. I want to insert a column before, which is in this case the account manager column, and then I will insert the column. So to select a column, it's control space, not shift space this time around. It's control space. But to insert, it's the same command, Control shift plus And that's how you insert a column. So I'm going to enter the July, July details. Then I'll proceed to type in the different revenue values for the clients. But in this case, I'm not going to do that. Once again, I will decide I need to delete this. I don't need it anymore. We just begun July. I don't have data for July until end of July. So to delete this, the same process, Control shift to select the entire column I want to delete and Control minus to delete. So let's move on. What if I want to total the revenue for all these clients you know, and the different months? So I'm going to create another entry, total. Now, there's a keyboard shortcut for 
doing auto summation it's going to as long as you have numbers a, a range of numbers without any break the auto summation is going to work out of box so I'm going to put the next cell after the last number in this case this cell that is where I'm going to do the auto summation keyboard shortcut the auto summation keyboard shortcut is alt plus equal to then I'll press enter so that's how you auto sum it's going to do the summation of all these numbers and put the value here for me and I can do it again for February halt equals to enter so what if I have many other months say from January to December and I don't want to keep doing it one after the other for each month I've done for February I want to be able to copy what I've done for February and somehow make it happen for the other months also there's a keyboard shortcut for that in fact there are two ways to do it two easy ways to do it I'm going to show you the easier of the two ways first which is using your mouse so I'll come to the February one and I'll place my mouse right on top of this small rectangle at the lower right corner of this cell which is this rectangle you will notice that my mouse pointer has changed to a solid black rectangle solid black cross then I'll click down and drag to the right voila and to make it show I'll double click here double click here and double click here and double click here so that's how you drag we call it dragging a formula you drag a formula from one cell across cells adjacent to it to repeat what you've done there for those other cells so what is the other way to go about doing this so I'm going to undo to undo is Control Z I'll do it as many times as I need okay and so the keyboard proper keyboard shortcuts to do that will be I will select starting from the cell that has the formula I want to put in the other cells then I'll begin to select to the other cells I want those formulas to be in once I've made the selection all I'll do is control R does the same thing tracks the formula from February to the other months so once again I can come here to make those things show double click here double click here so this is how you drag formulas across cells just so you know the last one I did the control R only drags formula from across across rows to the right you can use it to drag a formula downwards to drag a formula downwards there's another command for that which is control D so just wanted you to know that next I'm going to show you some cool ways of moving data moving cell entries from one place to the other so to do that I want to copy out Lafarge's entry so I'm going to select the entry for Lafarge I'll copy it then I'll paste it here so what if I decide no I don't want it to be here I want this Lafarge entry to be maybe way down I want it somewhere around here so instead of doing Control X to cut, cut and then doing pasting somewhere else I can simply select the Lafarge entry and I'll come to the edge of the border click on it and begin to move so I'll move my mouse pointer to wherever you can you will notice that I have this indicating where the cell is going to be if I release my left mouse so if I'm okay with this position then I'll release this is where it will be it will no longer be here so I'll move it downwards now you will notice that whenever I scroll down especially to be useful for this this table you'll notice whenever I scroll down my pizza sold everything here scrolls out of view so what if I wanted to remain in view because I would like to keep seeing what this 2000 stands for what this two what this two stands for to do that I'll need to freeze 
this particular group of cells i need to freeze this row in fact so to freeze there's a keyboard shortcut for that i'll come to the next cell after the row i want to freeze so what i want to freeze i want to freeze everything above this mitzah i want everything here to remain to be fixed to be i want to be frozen i don't want them to scroll out of view so to do that i'll do the keyboard shortcut is alt w f f so you'll notice as i keep scrolling the pizza sold remains this part remains in view it doesn't scroll out of view so that is how you freeze a group of cells or a row so to undo that to remove the freezing once again all i'll do is alt w f f now it's back to the way it was so that is how you freeze and unfreeze rows or group of cells so let's go back to this table so what if i make changes to this i change it to another company i change it to morgan morgan stanley Is Morgan Stanley in Nigeria now? So then I change the some of the values, update the values to what the values are for Morgan Stanley. Okay, so I'm done updating the values, and I also update the account manager. So what if I need to move this entry into this table? So what if I need to move this entry into this table? And in this case, I'll have to move it to above MTN. Now, you might be tempted to do what I did the last time, which is select this entry for Morgan Stanley and begin to drag it up now if I drop it if I drop it here expecting it to push MTN down and insert itself there it won't see what will happen I'll get a notification that do I want to replace the content of this destination set it's, if I click on OK it's just it's going to replace what I have in MTN so it's more like I've deleted MTN and put that entry there which is not what I want to do so what I will do is when I when I come to the border and I click down I'm going to hold also the con the shift key so what I'm going to do is when I'm dragging I'll hold down the shift key so I'm, I've held down the shift key then I'll move up to where I want to place it I want to place it just above MTN so I'll release the shift key and the mouse pointer at the same time voila so that is how you do that okay so let's move on so what if I copy just these two rows I'm going to do a copy ctrl C then I'll paste I'll paste right here ctrl V to paste then I after doing whatever I want to do with it I decide I don't need it anymore I'm going to delete so I'll, to delete you press on the delete key but you will notice that after deleting I still have these borders and shading this background color there so how do I remove this when you want to remove also the formatting you don't just want to delete the cell entries you want to delete everything including the borders the background color there's a keyboard shortcut for that so I'm going to undo the delete I did ctrl Z now to do the complete it's called erasing to do a complete erasing of everything here the keyboard shortcut is Alt H E A. So it erases what I have here. You can see everything is gone the cell entry, the borders, the background color. And lastly, if you want to see the command in a particular cell, you want to edit a command in a cell, let's say this particular cell that has total, 
there's a keyboard shortcut to access the command you notice by selecting this cell i am not seeing the command i will have to come over here to see the command but if i don't want to come over here to edit the command i want to edit it right inside here there are two ways i can press f2 and then i can begin to edit the command to change it to whatever i want it to be if i want to change it from sum to average you can do that so once i'm done i click on enter and it's done i'm going to undo that ctrl z the other way it's just right clicking into the cell and voila i can change the command so that is it for this video i have many other keyboard shortcuts i use but i don't want to overload you this one are the simple ones these are the ones i use a lot and i'm sure there are ones you can easily find use for even if you are not a power excel user so once again thank you for watching this video the next video obviously is going to be the request you make and don't forget to subscribe to our blog thank you